sun. Oh, see that glimmer off of Golden Gate? It's making me blind. All right, let's do it. LSD-25 is considered a drug by the government, but here in the birthplace of hippies and the cultural revolution of the 1960s, many people like Dr. Timothy Leary believe that lysergic acid, diethylamide, or rather LSD isn't a drug. Instead, he claims it is a tool for expanded consciousness, communication, and empathy. Many users have visual or auditory hallucinations. Dilated pupils, increased blood pressure, and temperature, duh, shit gets you lit. Today, many hardworking people still imbibe in the substance and go to work while doing so. The kids like to call it microdosing. This psychedelic drug was first synthesized on November 16, 1938 by Swiss chemist Albert Hoffman in his laboratories in Basel, Switzerland. It was not until five years later on April 19, 1943 that he discovered its true purpose when he got high as fuck and decided to ride his bike home. April 19th is now known as Bicycle Day. Now let's skip ahead to Dr. Fucking Feel Good. What a creep. If you guys think frat guys are bad, you should check this guy out. This motherfucker worked on the secret CIA project MKUltra. The project MKUltra was an umbrella term for the brainwashing and reprogramming that took place in the mid 50s and lasted up until 1973. Operatives of MKUltra dosed unknowing subjects with hallucinogenics in an experiment to change people's personalities. They would even go so far as to convince some of their subjects to be sleeper agents. People who would commit violent acts with absolutely no recollection at all. They implemented MKUltra's protocols into prisons, the hippie community, school systems, enemy soldiers, and even to their own colleagues. Projects derived from MKUltra were given redonkulous titles such as Avocado, French Toast, and the one that changed the landscape of San Francisco itself, Operation Midnight Climax. Jolly West was a creepy ass doctor who specialized in mind control. After performing a lot of these experiments on combatants during the Korean War, he shows up right on these very streets of Haight and Ashbury. West would watch experiments through a one-way mirror and take notes. After the climax, the sex workers would dose them with LSD and perform mind-altering experiments that would crush the human psyche to the point that it would admit anything. And guess who his favorite patient of all time was? That's right, Charlie fucking Manson. Manson, although on federal probation, committed multiple criminal acts that would send any parolee back to prison in a second. But for some reason, he had a great little get out of jail free card. How convenient for him. Was it because he was parading a flock of teenage girls here for Dr. West's experiments? Was the gruesome murder of Sharon Tate and her friends one of the results of Project MKUltra? But let's face it, Charles Manson was already quite the son of a bitch. He spent half of his life in jail before the Tate murder. Charlie went from common thief to carjacker and once even raped a little boy at knife point. We cannot prove that LSD made him any worse of a person, but perhaps he was conscious of the attempted brainwashing and learned how to influence people from the MK Ultra project. In Tom O'Neill's amazing book, you will find out that Manson pretty much had a get out of jail free card. In April 1953, Sidney Gottlieb, nicknamed the Black Sorcerer, became the head of the secret project MKUltra, which was activated on the order of CIA Director Alan Dulles. President Kennedy fired Director Dulles in 1961, but the MKUltra program would be conducted on the American public for more than another decade. Get this, two years after Kennedy fires Dulles, Kennedy is assassinated by a magic bullet. That's right, and guess who was on the Warren Commission? Yup, you got it. Former director Alan Dulles. Was Kennedy's assassination another result of MKUltra? Also, maybe with the Kennedy stuff, double check it, but one theory is that Kennedy was assassinated because he wanted to get rid of the CIA. I mean, who knows how far out these things went and how many assassinations were performed by these CIA creeps using mind control. As the existence of these horrifying CIA atrocities were made public, then CIA director Richard Helms ordered the MKUltra program shut down and had all related documents destroyed. And now, a commercial break from our sponsor. What comes in a can and you throw at your friends to make them all horribly blind? It's rich and it's creamy, it makes mother uneasy, it's soup, soup, soup. It looks like a food, it might be a toy, it's perfect for girls and boys. It smells kind of funny, it feels great in your tummy, bringing the whole world joy. But that's not all, boys and girls, there's more. Hey, there's more? That's right, soup comes in classic, tomato bis, chowder, and... Porridge! Soup, soup, soup. Everyone loves soup. Everyone loves soup. Warning, soup is not intended as a food. Warning, do not eat soup. 
Warning, stay away from soup. Warning, do not touch soup. Warning, if you see soup, run. Warning, soup available in stores now. Now in Jumbo. Institute of Illegal Images. Play. I put in a doorbell at great expense. Oh, welcome. My humble abode. Oh, what do they call you? My name is Will Robinson. Hi, Will. Yes, Welcome. Robinson. Come on in. Hi. Thank you, sir. What's yours? Matt. Hi, Matt. You're the, you're the d man, huh? Yeah. Do you want to uh, wear masks or do you? No, I, I had my shots. Okay. I had them in Georgia months ago. Great. Okay. I'll follow you. All right. We'll head into the other room there. This is the factory showroom. This is a perfect machine here. This is what it's all about. Dang, so this is 30, they... 30 blades, so you're talking 900 hits. On a paper like this, then? Yeah, like this, you know. Here's the Rolling Stones symbol, you know. You'd run that through 7x5x7x5, seven by five by seven by five, just that format. Nice. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. We'll proof your cards later. And then uh, we're featuring I'll just call Alex Gray. He's from Brooklyn, living in Woodstock. He's got a religion now in a commune up there called Cosm. Pretty good if you like communes. Yeah. I told him, don't, don't become a religion. They'll caress you. They'll caress you, you know, especially if you're good at something. So, uh, what's, uh, what's your favorite piece in here? Um, Person next one. Huh. Next one to come off the griddle. Collectors always have a, a want list much larger than whatever they got. It's like the great American novel, everyone's got one and you know, these just arrived today. You know, I have all sorts of people uh, donate stuff. I had a Zane Kesey donated a really nice uh, thing last month, mm -hmm. uh, the son of Ken. Oh yeah, and he makes a lot of blotter, but he uh, some guitarist found some old blotter in his guitar case and sent it to Zane, and he's not real interested in the history, so then he hooked me up. Cool. Yeah, I'd always wanted the piece. It was a Mr. Natural, back in the seventies. You know, Hendrix had a taster, an acid taster in his crowd. Oh yeah. Yeah, and he would uh, Carlo McCormick, the the old. Um, Art director of High Times interviewed the guy at one point, and he's just like, it was like a guy that really knows acid, and so much acid got thrown at Hendrix wherever he went, that he had an official taster. Man. What a that... good job. You ever seen the Pink Flamingos poster? No. It's only available if you attended the premiere. That's the real item. You could only get that at the premiere. There's a blotter in honor of that, which is this one up here. These pink flamingos, numbered by the DEA to be number 257. Oh, nice. They put the numbers on these when they closed off the street and brought in the lab hummer. And the first one they took off the wall is up there. It looks like a mandana, but it's the seal of the FBI. <laughs> oh yeah, the red one. It really pissed him off. Stole them from him. I know it. That's probably what you don't bring him in. Come on. Oh, this is Anthony. You, you drop your backup in there now. Uh, this way? Yeah. Well, what do you do, Anthony? <laughs> See an orifice check first. Okay. I'm ready. <laughs> we got um, Trump leading Putin and the Korean guy. Oh. into the ayahuasca jungle. Then they eat it and puke. And then the president gets a better vision of the future. <laughs> Just like he did. That's I told him if he used Rocky Erickson's working in the Kremlin for a two-headed dog song, he would have won that election. <laughs> <laughs>
perfect. It's really good. It was the best of last year. Yeah, Oakland's on mushrooms and Oregon's on mushrooms and that can't hurt. It depends what you do. Yeah. You know, um, I like the stronger stuff. It's no mercy. If you left some corner unclean, you, you're going to hear about it. <laughs> and, what's, uh, the, what's the greatest amount you've ever consumed? Well, um, you know, you can only metabolize 1,500 mics at one time. Yeah. The excess gets stored fecally. Oh. So go ahead and piss in the jar. Yeah. Yeah. That's not going to kill you. You know, I've had an industrial accident before. No, I was visiting a friend and he pours a bucket on you. Oh, sorry. Last time I had a big accident, I asked for all the poker songs of the dead. Yeah. All the poker songs. Yeah, it yeah. lasted like 12 how, hours. How, how long have you been in uh, San Francisco? I showed up in 66 out of Buenos Aires, Argentina. Yeah, I'm from this real gnarly neighborhood called boulogne sur mer Oh, wow. And it was only famous because it had one citizen there that was famous, Che Guevara's from there, El Che. When the war on terror happened, they tried to disappear us first. Yeah. Our neighborhood, because we were all radical. I actually did a lot of research on uh... Operation Midnight Climax. Have you ever heard of that before? Yeah, sure. I, you know, it's part of my job to know about that. We're talking pills at that point. Let's not talk Manson. Let's talk Bobby Beausoleil. I mean, Bobby was an incredible guitarist. Yeah. And he had a great band here. And he got accused of being the first Manson murderer. And he did 51 years in prison for killing a guy that burned him in a dope deal. There's a movie that no one's seen that I love a lot. It's called Chappaqua. Chappaqua. And it's that town that uh, the Clintons retired in. Oh, yeah? But it's also where there was a clinic, an LSD clinic, set up by a friend of ours called Cappy Hubbard, the Cappy. Johnny Appleseed of LSD. Okay. And he was a CIA agent that found a uranium mine, yeah. and he became a millionaire, so he bought an airplane to fly around. And then he bought a quarter of a million dollars worth of Sandoz LSD yeah. to give to everybody. Nice. Check and, uh, nice. He gave it to Las Janiger in Los Angeles to give to the actors and turn them out, you know. Yeah. And then he gave some to little Tim Leary so that Tim could give some to Mary Pinchot Myers to turn Jack Kennedy on at the White House. And that's what got him killed. And uh, he spread his acid everywhere. You know, and uh, he lived a long, long time. When he got out of the CIA, he became the head of security at Stanford Research Institute mm -hmm. and arrested Ken Kesey demonstrating outside wow. one day, and they became good friends. Cappy Hubbard himself had a time machine they found when he died. Oh, shit. We voted him on to this uh, group of people called the Albert Hoffman Foundation, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and uh, Terry McKenna put me in there. Nice. And um, it was just this great club that was trying to house Albert's notes, and find a permanent place to build an LSD museum. So I started my evening at this museum watching the Mao series. Yeah. Guess who his date was? Who? Julia Child. Julia Child. She was a spy. She was a CIA agent. Yeah. A sleeper. No one knew about it. Yeah. <laughs> no one knew about it. But she had been a friend of Cappy Hubbard's since the OSS. Yeah. And you got to reread her uh, recipe for beef bourguignon. Uh, this is heavy duty acid head. <laughs> but she was a you know, sleeper agent like Palm, the ambassador's uh, wife that Cheney outed because her husband told everyone. There ain't no mass destruction, Bob. Yeah. You know, what, what the fuck are you guys talking about? <laughs> you think there ain't no miracles? That guy's still alive and Lou Reed's dead. Yeah. Explain it to me, Lucy. Oh, and there ain't no justice in this world. Nope. <laughs> I guess when you get rid of your heart, you don't have a heart attack. Maybe his asshole will kill him. I talked to someone that's in the know, and they told me that Cheney is magic with his workers. Yeah. And that everybody in the fucking White House was at his service because he's such an incredible comical guy. <laughs> and he had all of them pranked to the point where they just like 
interacting with this guy. Oh, the guy and running Abu Ghraib is minute. a good guy. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. No, and he knew people to that extent. <laughs> he knew how to just fuck them, <laughs> joke them to the extent, you know. Huh. His whole life's like that, every day. He's got a meeting out of his hand. Is Ellen DeGeneres CIA? I heard um, that before. God, why not? You know, I told <laughs> Robert Forte, my dear friend, that uh, uh, does those psychedelic books, I said, you know, we're probably CIA, and uh, since we don't know it, they don't have to pay us. <laughs> <laughs> well, the beautiful investigative reporter, Joel Sullivan, you yeah. know, who wrote Summer Love and that Altamont book that he just put out, mm -hmm. he asked the FBI for the Owsley files, and they claim they don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> And they claim that they don't have any, any information on Owsley. Owsley? Who the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and it's really hilarious to me that they would deny having that file, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, think of Hunter's file. Uh, Hunter's file's got to be tremendous. Okay. Because you know? he was like so freaky to everybody, you know. Yeah. Tells Angel's book. Cause <laughs> He, then he did the Cuban immigration book, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, he was always involved in heavy duty shit. He even ran for sheriff. <laughs> of course, they had a file on him. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Notice this graphic novel here. Yeah, there you go. The illustrations. Uh, MK Ultra. You yeah. Know. Okay, but okay. that's a really good one. Were you Were you here around? Uh, we've all, 60s, we all saw that place where the, the experiment Spirit took place. Where did it take place? Up on Knob Hill here, now in uh, North Beach. North Beach. Yeah, there's an actual apartment they had with, with uh, one-way mirrors and stuff where they bring the Johns in and yeah. dose them. You know? How do you think they dosed them? Like, I was, they took like a, a, cigarette? a magician. No, the Dirty Tricks uh, hired a magician to show them how to load drinks without being noticed. Mm -hmm. And he was an actual magician, taught him how to do it. Wow. Then yeah, I, there's I'm a good dead. book called I, San I Francisco that. Bizarro, okay. r written uh, by a local uh, reporter that all of those addresses are in. Hand me that. Even oh. Owsley's bathtub <laughs> acid manufacturing place over in Lafayette's in there. And, um, he, put the, the, he put us in there too. <laughs> you know, they killed an yeah. elephant on an acid. Yeah. MK Ultra did. Yeah. And yeah, um, that's yeah. why I did the acid, the elephant sheet, you know, with Dumbo and all the pink elephants. I did it in honor of Tusco, I which just was the this. elephant's name that got killed by LSD. By Johnny Yeah, and it was done at UC Davis, my alma mater. <laughs> you know? And then 20 years later, they had the guy back and gave him another elephant. And this time, instead of injecting him, um, he put it in the elephant's food and let his best friend hang around. And the elephant had a great trip. <laughs> <laughs> but the first one, they injected this huge amount of acid and it caused a reaction where his throat inflamed and he suffocated to death. The great mighty Tusco. So I did that sheet of bladder for him. <laughs> the pink elephant bladder. <laughs> but that's how Dumbo learns how to fly. <laughs> that's how it that makes sense. Mark, I just wanted to ask, since you got back from Paris, um, what are the biggest changes you've seen in San Francisco <laughs> more broadly or in the, in the acid um, culture specifically? Well, I've seen a lot of changes, but not how that stint because I only evaded the draft till Jimmy Carter pardoned me and that took about two years because of Nixon's demise you know and when Nixon went down we all partied and he was the real bummer because he wasn't like this last clown this guy got up every morning trying to figure out how to kill you and that's what he was doing he was killing us and he thought of the DEA, and he thought of giving Elvis a badge. And, <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> and he's trying to kill you, that guy. <laughs> and he tried to kill me, and Jimmy Carter forgave me for running. I like that kind of blotter that's coming out now, that's progressive, you know, grabs the worst guy and tries to portray him 
as doing better tripping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I thought that's the solution. Yeah, the Trump one was a, the Trump <laughs> the one. Trump fantastic. Yeah. And um, you know, fixes the Koreans guy's wagon too. <laughs> and uh, Putin who trips all the time I'm sure. Yeah. Being K G B they all had a trip. Like our CIA, you know, they all had a trip. Right. And no one asks uh, Senior Bush if his trip was bad and why is he so fucking uptight about it. <laughs> Straight up. But he tripped. Yeah, they have to, to I mean Yeah. Not uh, Hamilton's father did that mini series about Dr. Olson, the CIA agent that tripped and got his conscience, and he was going to tell the world about our germ warfare in Korea. And the agency pushed him out a window and killed him. And I recommend it. It's on uh, Wormwood. Net, Wormwood. Yeah. And it's a four part series, but that's Hamilton's dad did that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then his, his father's new show. Errol Morris is that? That's right. That's Hamilton Morris's father. Wow. And his <laughs> new movie is highly recommended. And his father just finished a piece a month ago, huh. and it's a love story about Tim Leary and his third wife, Joanna Harcourt Smith, a good friend of ours, who became an informant for four months, and talked Tim into it. And she did it for love. <laughs> but the show's about her. And it's just one it's just a movie about her. And she dies about two days before the movie comes out. But Lenny Picard's in the movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he gets to have dinner with her before she dies when he got out. Oh man. And it's just a great movie. More blotter in the movie than any movie I've ever seen. There's like two hundred sheets of blotter in the movie. They borrowed 150 of them here, and then he made up another 50, Hamilton's dad. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> and it's really good. Each scene cuts to blotter sheets going by, and the guy went nuts with the blotter. <laughs> Hamilton's dad, a family of acid heads. <laughs> That's dope. I did not know that. Ah, time's up. It's been real. It's been one of the realest. Hey. Thank, yeah, thank you. you so much for letting us in here. This we nearly awesome. made it. <laughs> <laughs> we nearly made it. I'm glad I let you in. I thought for sure you were agency. Let me get this. You know, I'm leasing the body. I, I just have to get the deposit <laughs> thank back. So much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate More dust. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you, Mark. I'm glad I came. I'm glad you did it, Matt. That was good. Me too. Thank you so much, Mark. Well, bye bye. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad I recognized you. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise, man. Man, this has been awesome. <laughs> that was so cool. One yeah, he just stopped in at the end, Michael. What do you think? I know he was an insightful guy, insightful as hell. I wish I could have been able to like stay there longer and talk to him, but when he would look at you in your eyes, you just, you just it's like he was so there. That guy was fucking. Sad. I'm so I'm so happy for you, bro. Will is just over the moon right now. Oh man. Any, uh, you want to cap that off for us, Will? You got what? Do you, what, what just happened? Man, it was a life-changing, life-changing experience for me as a psychonaut. Just being uh, able to speak in the, just being in the presence of somebody who has like uh, met and gotten to trip with some of the most like uh, well-known fucking psychonauts of our in the, of history. That shit's just crazy. Like the energies that you get from being around man it's crazy just energies on 10,000 million fucking percent the acid probably had something to do with that but it's fucking vibes oh yeah it was an amazing interview i can't wait to you know write my family and tell them i got them a, a postcard huh. i don't know what kind of glue this is who gave you that stuff a guy in the park this is, it's not sticking. Kind of tastes funny.
I am a golden god!